being in the dark is scary enough. I was solo camping May 1st last year and was terrorized by something imitating barred owls. Okay, so here's the setup. I am in a Nevada mountain range, not too far from the Sierra Nevada, and tonight I am going to be reading some of you guys' comments, give you guys a chance to be heard. Some of these comments are pretty incredible experiences and encounters you guys have had. They're like mini stories. So I thought it'd be fun to read some of these. I've just randomly picked some off of my videos. So these are not necessarily the best or whatever, but pretty amazing. So we're going to do that. And I got a beer and uh, it's probably going to be well after dark by the time I get out of here. So, all right, let's get to it. All right, for tonight's beer, we have Big Wave Golden Ale. That is by the Kona Brewing Company. And that is a tasty beer, because I already know it. I've drank a few of these before. And it is, it says Liquid Aloha right on the glass there. That's kind of cool. I don't know if you can see that. All right, see if we can get a non-sudsy. Oh yeah, golden. That is very golden. Oh, very nice. All right, cheers. That is pretty good. It's a little warmer than I wanted. I was not able to get down to a creek. There was one on the way in. Deep Canyon, it must have been 500 feet down. Pretty amazing. It was just roaring too, so. Also, up here where I am, it is dead silent. Zero wind is what I mean. I can hear some frogs down this way. Uh, must be a marsh or something next to the, the stream. Okay, so I'm just gonna read these. I hope you guys are okay with that. I will be continuing to do regular stories, but I thought this was really interesting all of these comments, you guys, there's a, like I said, there's a lot of comments you guys put out there. They're talking about your encounters and things that happened to you a long time ago and it's still really big in your life. And it's just really good to know that there's other people, a lot of other people that have had different levels of experience with these things called Sasquatch. So this is from Afterburner. My family and I had two run-ins with these creatures on the west branch of the Feather River back in the 1970s. I have never forgotten being escorted out of the area by one. It wasn't hostile, but it made damn sure to let me know I wasn't welcome there. My parents had the same experience three weeks later in the exact same spot. Wow. <laughs> And that is um, where Jeanette lives, is along the middle fork of the Feather River. So, same river system. This one's from Brian. Oh my gosh, or OMG, what a scary hike out of there. I've heard several stories where some guys were kind of in trouble with these creatures, and the guys started praying or talking like they had a partner. They didn't. When the creatures thought they weren't alone, things eased up. So if you're out there by yourself, start talking like you're with somebody. Thanks. Great story. Wow. Probably a good thing to do. I do a lot of talking to myself anyways when I'm out. because My thoughts just come right out of my head, out of my mouth. And a lot of times I'm kind of practicing to get ready for a video or something. This one's from Teresa. A few years ago, I experienced strange knockings in a Pennsylvania state forest. I was in my car reading when I heard three loud knockings 50 yards from me. Again, three more knocks 50 yards away. Seconds later, I heard more tree knocking, but from a different direction. There were tree knockings from three different directions. I looked to see who was out there making these tree knockings from 50 yards away but could not see anything through the thick brush. I was alone and wasn't going to make any effort to find the source of the tree knocking. The whole event left me uneasy. Wow. 
<laughs> that is definitely not a bear. That is definitely not a mountain lion. Couldn't imagine some people with sticks out in the woods late at night in a state forest. Crazy. This one is from Lady Prepared. Similar thing happened to my family of four in the redwoods. Started with the forest getting dead silent. Then we felt like something was watching us. As we turned to start hiking back, we heard noises that let us know that something was definitely keeping pace alongside of us along the tree line. The experience culminated when a huge log was hurled through the trees down at us. I can tell you we never ran so fast in our lives to get our children out of there. It's definitely their turf and they let you know when they want you to be gone. Wow. <laughs> can't imagine a tree being thrown at you. That's crazy. This one's from Carol. A friend of mine had a similar experience in Northwest Montana back in the early 70s. He was driving on a Forest Service road on his way home after a fishing trip. It was dark and he was driving slowly because of the rutted curvy road when he came around a bend and a huge something slid down an embankment in front of his truck. He said it spun around and angrily slapped its hairy hands on his hood. He slammed on the brakes and didn't hit it. And then it swiftly ran into the forest on the other side. This guy was a fourth generation Montanan, raised on a ranch and was a skilled hunter fisherman. He knew all the wildlife in those mountains, including bears, and he swore it was some kind of an enormous ape man. Wow. <laughs> to be that close and just by yourself on the... A road like that and have something like that not just go across the road but like get ticked off at you because you got in his way it's not the other way around <laughs> he got in your way he's like you got in my way <laughs> this road that I came in on a winding dirt road going through these mountains here steep drop-offs forest on either sides very similar. Hopefully something like that doesn't happen on the way out for me. <laughs> this is from Deer Haven. I live in the woods like that and refuse to go outside after dark. My friends tell me, oh, you should set up some trail cams. And I tell them, no way. I don't want to know what's creeping around out there at night. Uh, I kind of don't blame you. This is from Jackpot Joey. I've been fishing and hiking all over California my entire life. Some of my family lived in a remote part of the Trinity County outside of Weaverville. I spent a lot of time exploring as a kid and never did I have any strange encounters or feelings of uneasiness. As an adult, I have had two strange experiences. In 2011, while steelhead fishing Redwood Creek behind the town of Oric, a large single rock the size of a basketball came flying out of the trees across the river and landed on the cobbles of the riverbed about 30, 40 yards upstream from me. It definitely did not happen from a slide or a tumble as it was dead quiet when it happened. The second strange encounter happened this past summer while with my family in the Humboldt Redwoods while in the Avenue of the Giants. I was with my two kids, seven and nine, when we were overcome by a very strong sulfur smell that soon changed to a foul, pungent odor. Shortly after the smell subsided, I sat my kids on a fallen tree for a photo. My son got beady-eyed and said, Dad, I saw something very tall and brown run behind the trees over there. I played it off like it was a deer, but he casually said, No, it was really tall. He has never fibbed or embellished any story ever. Happy Thanksgiving. Wow. <laughs> Gotta listen to the kids. We've heard that before, haven't we? This is from Beverly. Chris, you're an amazing storyteller. Thank you, Beverly. Certain parts of the story made my hair stand up. Reminds me of the fear I experienced at about 11 years old. I was a Girl Scout and my troop was on a camping trip with lots of other troops. My best friend and I were assigned the task of escorting the parents from their cars to the campsite. It was very dark and we only had flashlights. While leading one set of parents, the dad obviously thought it would be funny to scare me and my best friend. He was telling a scary story and my best friend and I both got tears in our eyes and the mom made him stop. Too late, we were petrified and had to walk back in the dark all by ourselves. 
I experienced that same hair-raising fear while listening to your story. I am now 69, and I loved it. Got my blood pumping for sure. All right. It's good to have your blood pumping. That's a good thing. That's awesome, though. Wow. Yeah, you don't, don't do that to the kids. There's enough out there. Just being in the dark is scary enough, let alone trying to scare the kids. It's one thing to voluntarily listen to a scary story. It's another to uh, somebody trying to scare you and... Uh, and you got to go back in the woods by yourself. Yikes. This is from Rogue Squatcher. We had experienced many interactions with a Sasquatch at our old farm here in Michigan. We had pebbles thrown at us while out in the woods, banging on the house and pole barn, whoops, roars, trails blocked by pushed over trees, and the occasional foul smell of a large wet animal of extreme body odor, dead animal smell, and my first face-to-face -face very close sighting of a nine-foot male changed me from a believer to a knower. Keep up the good work. All right, thank you, Rogue Squatcher. Wow, that's a story of a story. <laughs> There's a story here is what I'm trying to say. Nine-foot male. All right, I got my light situation adjusted here. It's kind of cozy. At least it's not freezing, snowing, and raining, and <laughs> it is getting dark quickly, though. Don't fear the reaper. That's this guy's name. That's a very unique encounter. I've heard one from my friend's brother who was about 65 at the time and his health was declining. But he told me that back in the 90s, he lived in some newly constructed apartments on the Lake Fork in Texas. He had put out some small solar lights around the outskirts of his back patio. Beyond the patio were weeds about three feet deep and they went back about a hundred feet to the wood line. He noticed at night time he would feel the ground vibrating, not from anyone above him, but it was in the ground like heavy footfall. One night he got up off the couch and slowly cracked open the blind to look out and see what the noise was, and he said he had seen a very small child-sized creature covered in hair down on its knees, and it kept reaching out with its finger touching the solar light as it was amazed by the light. After it touched it a few times out of curiosity, it stood up, and went off into the weeds. Up to that point, he didn't know anything about Sasquatch or give two shits about the subject until that happened. He also seen several adults standing just inside the wood line on two different occasions. After that, what you're doing is much needed. People need to know they exist. Wow. <laughs> wow. Did you imagine seeing that in your own backyard? Okay, this is from Watson Street pictures. I'm from close to this area and have spoken to people who have never seen anything, but they've heard strange sounds. I've camped in Manning Park, which is also close by. I've been woke up at night by bizarre calls and response screams from between two tree-covered hills. I've heard coyotes and other animals many times, but this was something else. I can't explain. Pretty awesome when you finally experience it. Wow. Yeah, late at night, you hear something like that and you can't identify it. And the more you know, the more you realize it may be something like a Sasquatch. This is from Georgina. That's a huge yikes for me. I babysat a lot as a teenager and had weird stuff happen in the home after dark. Never failed. I eventually stopped babysitting altogether because no one believed me or the kids and what we told them. Thank goodness it was not as bad as this, but scary all the same. I feel bad for this child, though. He knew what he saw, and this had to be traumatic for him. I bet the parents ended up seeing something, and that is why they moved. Always believe your kids. Yes, I agree. Give people a little bit of benefit of the doubt. We're not all crazy and on drugs. <laughs> That's what the two really common things people say. What are you crazy? You must have been on drugs. That's not even original at all. So just got to say, this is from Blue Mountain Cowgirl. I love these stories, especially the ones from my native state of Colorado. In 1979, I worked for the Department of the Interior. Two game wardens told me, because I asked him if there were grizzly bears in Colorado. Because my dad actually saw one. 
They looked around as we were in an office and put up four fingers in the air, then put their finger to their mouth as to tell me not to say anything. Much is kept from us. I have found Bigfoot tracks and have heard them. Thank you, Chris, from Western Colorado. Take care. Well, you're very welcome. This is from Osborne Outdoors. So sorry to hear that, Dennis. I was solo camping May 1st last year and was terrorized by something imitating barred owls and what sounded like demonic chimpanzees. I too have camped solo lots, but haven't been solo since. I honestly never gave these things a second thought, but now I don't go into the woods at all without it always being in the back of my mind. I wanted to start a camping channel, bushcrafting and hiking adventures, but I don't know anymore. Thanks for sharing your story and maybe we'll be able to work through the traumatizing effects of our experiences and make it back to what was a true passion. God bless. Sorry to hear that, Osborne. That's, uh, that's tough. And I think there's a lot more to the story than we got in this little mini story or comment. This is from Susan. That was truly a scary and creepy story. I would be spooked to spend the night as kids in a fort. I am originally from Euphrata, Washington, and when we as kids, we used to spend the night in our friend's barn, which is almost out near their pasture. We would literally scare ourselves to death hearing noises in the night. Love your stories, Chris. Can't hardly wait to hear your next one. Enjoy camping, everybody. This is from Our Angel. I lived in a cabin near Yosemite Park for three years alone. Never had put much thought into the Bigfoot phenomenon. My nearest neighbor was two miles away and I was very ro remote for the most part. After living there for several months, something or someone threw a single rock that hit my roof above where I was sleeping at 3 a.m. I was pretty startled to think someone was in the forest watching me. But just one rock? Question mark. This activity continued every few weeks and sometimes two rocks were thrown. This even happened when it was 13 degrees outside with light snow on the ground. Never did see anything, but the overcoming fear, dead silence, and the feeling of being watched is certainly unnerving. Wow. I have actually never felt that feeling of being watched. This is from Elizabeth. You know, I grew up running around in a cab over RV with my family. We were always out and about on weekends and took trips whenever we could. We had some mighty strange things happen to us too. Some of it could have been caused by humans, but having things thrown at the camper or having it rocked from side to side when there's no wind and you're out in the middle of nowhere is super strange. My dad was a big old Marine and he would not tangle with it and did not want to talk about it even. We would look at each other and just stay quiet. Odd things would also happen to us in the areas around Fort Bragg, Russian River, and Cloverdale before they were built up. Gold areas. I remember that one day we woke up and as usual my brother and I got up early to run around outside and something had left small fish in a straight line along our back bumper. The thing is that this back bumper had an end that opened so that you could store your fishing poles in it. It's as though something knew what we wanted and tried to give it to us. Wow, that is really interesting. <laughs> so obviously, if it was a Sasquatch, it was watching them and watching them fish and probably even cook the fish. Wow, incredible. And this is our last one here. This is from Charlene. Love to sit and listen to stories. My grandmother was a storyteller and passed it on to me. My son's nieces and nephews would sit around our campfire and say, please tell us a scary story. They would all be spread out in a circle when I started, and by the end of the story, there were five kids pulled onto my triple-fold beach chair, and my two-man tent turned into a six-person tent. <laughs> I so enjoy those special times with them. They are grown with their own kids, still getting together at Halloween for hot dogs, marshmallows, and scary stories with a new generation. Keep them coming. I so enjoy. Thanks for sharing. All right. Thank you, Charlene. I appreciate that. <laughs> so yeah, you guys got a lot of stories of your own and keep making those comments. If you feel like sending it in, I'll take a look at it. I 
appreciate you guys doing that. It takes me some time to get to these stories, to read them, and I actually work a full-time job, so. But yeah, just amazing, the amount of stories. It's not like there's just a handful of stories and they cycle around the internet or YouTube or something. It's like many, many people have stories, and even if they're just hearing some whoops in the forest or footsteps or something that just doesn't add up. And I've had a few of those things myself. Never a direct experience, never a sighting, but just a few little things that were off. I did find footprints once. Actually, on two occasions, once in Lassen National Park, they were really wide too. Got some pictures of that. I'll talk about that again sometime. I got some more information about that. But what an absolute beautiful night we got here. The stars are coming out. Um, but I am going to get back out of here, <laughs> get in my vehicle, and go home. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Please continue to comment. I just love it, and uh, it's a great community we have here. We'll see you next time. Keep hiking.